dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we know that during the time of Lent, many, many of you have great devotion to the Stations of the Cross. I'm happy to let you know that in front of the main entrance of the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Victoria Street, we have 15 Stations of the Cross in the Garden of Resurrection. There are also 15 Stations of the Cross inside the main Cathedral Church. However, in this presentation, I'd like to walk you through the 15 Stations of the Cross. Come to this Cathedral when you can during the Lenten season. Have your personal devotion or bring your family and friends to make the Stations of the Cross, to be nourished by your faith and to be strengthened by the reality of God's compassionate love that He has shown us through this beautiful Stations of the Cross devotion that we have in our Catholic Church. I welcome you one and all, and I look forward to seeing all of you here. Stations of the Cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Help us, Lord, to see more clearly and to realize more deeply our obligation to those whom we should love. Help us to overlook their weaknesses and to stress their strengths and their virtues. Help us to see you in them, to love and serve you in them, wherever they are. You showed us an example of this, especially on your painful way of the cross. Help us to follow your wonderful example. Keep in mind. station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, after having been scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate 
to die on the cross. Let us pray. Technically and legally, Pilate was your superior, Lord. Technically and legally, he was within his rights in condemning you. Surely, he acted unjustly, but it was more from fear than from malice. If you love Judas, who betrayed you, we may be sure that you love Pilate, who condemned you. Lord, sometimes it is difficult to love our superiors. We may not like them, or they may give us commands we do not like, or they may be unjust or partial. Yet, Lord, if you could love Pilate and Herod and Caiaphas, surely we can love those whom you appoint to guide and lead and help us. Help us to do this well, dear Lord. second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, in making this journey with the cross on his shoulders, thought of us and offered for us to his Father the death he was about to undergo. Let us pray. Lord, people hurt me even as they hurt you. They hurt me accidentally and deliberately in body, mind and soul. To love such people is perhaps your most difficult command. Yet, not only did you command, but you gave us a magnificent example. You and all your great saints, help me to follow this example and really forgive and love my enemies and those who hate and harm me.
the third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Consider this first fall of Jesus under the cross. His flesh was torn by the scourges. His head was crowned with thorns. He had lost a great quantity of blood. So weakened, he could scarcely walk. Yet he had to carry this great load upon his shoulders. The soldiers struck him rudely, and he fell several times. Let us pray. It is not difficult to love when we are well and happy and people are good to us. It is when things are black, when everyone and everything seems to be against us, and yet we love them. It is then that we are really following you. It is then that we are really your disciples. station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Consider the meeting of the son and his mother, which took place on this journey. Their looks became like so many arrows to wound those hearts which loved each other so tenderly. Let us pray. It was not difficult for you, Lord, to love your loving mother. But for us, sometimes it is difficult when we see their many weaknesses and shortcomings. Help us, Lord, to love them in and through and because of you. Fifth station, Simon helps Jesus to carry the cross. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the Jews, seeing that at each step Jesus was at the point of expiring, and fearing he would die on the way, whereas they wished him to die the shameful death of the cross, constrained Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross behind our Lord. Let us pray. In bigger matters and in little things, many people help us in many ways. Help us to realize and appreciate their help and to love and serve them. Help us to be eternally grateful to you for your never-ending shower of gifts on us. Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, o Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the holy woman named Veronica, seeing Jesus so ill used and bathed in sweat and blood, wiped his face with a towel on which was left the impression of his holy countenance. Let us pray. Though that was a small gesture, Veronica, in that way, showed her love to you in the way you needed it most at that time. Sometimes our love misfires. We give the wrong things to the wrong person in the wrong way at the wrong time. Help us, Lord, to realize that love does not mean just getting rid of things, which may be a form of self-service, but understanding others and their needs and helping them at the time they need it most. Thank you. 
seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, o Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the second fall of Jesus under the cross, a fall which renews the pain of all the wounds in his head and members. Let us pray. Lord, the soldiers who were taking you to be crucified were not doing their duty. They were ordinary people doing what for them was, but not a day's work. Most of our companions are like that, ordinary people doing ordinary work. Let us pray for them and love them even though in and through their work, consciously or unconsciously, they may hurt us. Were you there when he fell the second time? Were you there? Were you station, Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how these women wept with compassion at seeing Jesus in such a pitiable state, streaming with blood as he walked along. Daughters of Jerusalem, he said, weep not for me, but for yourselves and for your children. Let us pray. It is very difficult to understand the needs of others when we are suffering and hurt. Yet on your way to Calvary, you encourage and console the women of Jerusalem. Help us never to neglect opportunities to help others, no matter how difficult it may be for us. station. Jesus falls the third time. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the third fall of Jesus Christ. His weakness was extreme, and the cruelty of his executioners excessive, who tried to hasten his steps when he could scarcely move. Let us pray. Lord, help me to love strangers, all the people I meet, people I don't know, people who at first may seem aggressive, but in whom you dwell. Help me by showing love to these people to bring you to birth in them, so that they too may come to know and love you. Help me to preach you the God of love, by my love. Tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the violence with which Jesus was stripped by the executioners. His inner garments adhered to his torn flesh and they dragged them off so roughly that his skin came with them. Let us pray. I suppose, Lord, your clothes were the last things you could call your own. Yet you allow them to be taken from you. Very often, I need far less than I have. Help me to be more generous with my possessions. Help me to remember that I am a steward, not the owner, and that possibly in God's eyes, another person in need may have greater right than I do to something I have but do not need.
the eleven station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, having been placed upon the cross, extended his hands and offered to his eternal Father the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. Those soldiers fastened him with nails and then securing the cross, allowed him to die with anguish on this infamous gibbet. Let us pray. All strength flows from prayer. A loving person must love God, and a praying person should love others. You, in complete union with God, found time and energy, even in your darkest moments, to love and pray for others. Even those who are inflicting the greatest pain on you. Help us, Lord, to be loving people who pray, and praying people who love. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, being consumed with anguish after three hours of agony on the cross, abandoned himself to the weight of his body bowed his head and died. Let us pray. It is difficult to help others when we make demands on ourselves. But there is no way we can love if we are not prepared to sacrifice. You loved us, Lord Jesus, and you sacrificed your life for us. Help us to be real Christians, giving ourselves generously to the service of others.
13th station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We rose by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Consider how, after our Lord had expired, two of his disciples, Joseph and Nicodemus, took him down from the cross and placed him in the arms of his afflicted mother. Let us pray. One of the most difficult tasks of love is fraternal correction. Yet you did this often during your life, and even at the moment of death. Help me, when the need arises, to do this task courageously, yet gently and tactfully, trying not to hurt, but to build up and help the person. Fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Consider how the disciples, accompanied by his holy mother, carried the body of Jesus to bury it. They closed the tomb and all came sorrowfully away. Let us pray. Lord, somehow, even though you were dead, you managed to inspire hope in the hopeless mourners around you. Help me to consider this an important part of the apostolate of love, to give hope to the hopeless, courage to the faint-hearted, life and faith to the despairing. Christ is risen. 
Since you have been raised up to be with Christ, you must look for the things that are above where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on things above, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died. And now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, He is your life. You too will be revealed with Him in glory. Lord, we know that all is not over as yet. We are on our way, and the journey will only be completed when we reach the end. Help us to remain faithful to you always, and to recognize you in the other people on earth, so that we may all reach you in glory beyond death. Amen. Let us pray one Our Father, one Hail Mary, one Glory Be, for the Pope's intention. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be. Lord, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May He defend you from all evils and bring you to life eternal. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
So brothers and sisters in Christ, the stations of the cross that I've chosen to reflect on today is Simon of Cyrene helping Jesus to carry his cross. We know that as Jesus was struggling on his way to Calvary, he was on his verge of collapsing and dying. The cruel Roman authorities did not want Jesus to die on the way to Calvary because they wanted Jesus to be crucified shamefully on the cross on Calvary to remind people of what the punishment is like for criminals. And as the soldiers saw Jesus about to collapse and die, they pulled Simon of Cyrene from the crowd to help Jesus carry the cross. Simon could have resisted, he could have rejected, but he willingly stepped forward to carry the cross of Jesus. The moment of stepping forward for Simon of Cyrene was a moment of consolation for Jesus in his agony of about being, carrying the cross and about to die. The consolation that Simon of Cyrene gave to Jesus cannot be measured. But what was in the heart of Simon of Cyrene? The crowd was probably jeering at him. What was he thinking? At certain moments, Simon of Cyrene perhaps wanted to give up, but he did not. He persevered. And the reason I suppose he was able to persevere in helping Jesus bear the burden of the cross was because he was able to focus with compassion in his heart to relieve in some way the suffering that Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, was going through. And so, let us be reminded that you and I too are called to relieve the burden of the suffering of Jesus, who even at this moment is suffering in pain because of the immense suffering and sin in the world. A good mother feels the pain in her heart. A good father too feels the pain in her heart when they see their child do wrong or when they see the child suffering. This is an experience of love. Likewise, Jesus continues to suffer when we cause him to suffer through our different ways of sinfulness. We are called to bring then the consolation of life to Jesus by witnessing with greater fidelity the gospel that Jesus had proclaimed and has shown us through his life. Living the gospel again is never easy. We are called to be determined and we are called to build our lives on the foundation of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. But when the cross and the living of the gospel may seem at times to be overwhelming and too much for us to bear, or because the temptations of life can be too attractive and be too overwhelming for us, or the addictions of our sins can tend to rob us from the desire to want to live the gospel of Christ, let us remember, no pain, no efforts on our own, no desires of our heart to want to live the gospel can destroy and crush us. When the goings are tough in living the gospel, let us always remember that the crosses of our lives will never crush us. If we are on the verge of being crushed by the crosses of being faithful to God, 
Jesus then, be sure, will become Simon of Cyrene of our lives. He will bear the cross that we are carrying, and he will make sure that we will not crush under the burden of the cross of fidelity to the will of God in living the gospel. Let us be consoled then that as God is a God of mercy, God is also a God of salvation. It is God's deepest desire when he created us that we live with him for all eternity. And while we are on this earth's journey, while the challenges and the temptations continue to inflict its dominance and influences on us, we must remain focused on Jesus and be reminded that if we are to fall, Jesus will be Simon of Cyrene in our lives. Let us draw consolation and assurance that this is our faith. Jesus, the merciful God, will never let us suffer meaninglessly, let alone let us be crushed by the crosses of our lives. Let us then pray that as we continue to contemplate the suffering of Christ, we draw strength from Jesus himself and persevere and be faithful at all times to the gospel of Christ. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Amen.